Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Over the last few months, I've been learning and expanding my mind in my spare time. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take their next step in their creative journey. With the Skillshare app right at your fingertips, there's no reason not to deepen existing passions, learn a new skill, and get lost in creativity. Last month, I was leaning more towards photography and how to get those perfect truck pictures for social media. But this month, I'm taking a four hour class all about the fundamentals of a diesel engine so I can try to deepen my knowledge about them uh, pretty much in general. With thousands of other classes including illustration, music, freelancing, design, and entrepreneurship, there truly is a class for everyone. Skillshare is all about learning, so that means there's no ads to interrupt you as you're taking a class. They're always launching new premium content so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of my followers that click the link down below in the description will get a one month free trial to Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. What is going on guys? Diff and Diesel back. We're here at Iron Ape Coatings and Fab or their new name, Panhandle Precision Performance and Powder Coating. You guys have seen this shot multiple times, but it's been a few months since I've actually brought you guys down here. Um, you guys did see a little bit of the powder coating that they did for uh, my Cummins. It was the turbo, the valve cover, intercooler tubes, intake box, the exhaust tip from Diamond Eye. But see what Chase is doing. And you got this shop all cleaned up, didn't you? I've been working on it. Slowly, slowly getting there. You guys remember this truck? They're actually finally getting ready to sell this thing now. He's just cleaning it up a little bit. You guys want 55 grand? Yep. 55 or, grand. You know, or best offer. Yeah. Just going with what you know they're going for on the market right now. It's a 2015. It's got a hundred and right at 149,000 miles on it. Uh, it's got a. That's on the body and chassis. That's on the body and chassis. The actual does have a used engine in it but it's got an engine that came out of a wrecked truck that had 80,000 so yeah. the engine itself just has somewhere around I'm gonna say somewhere around 83 84,000 like I said we got the engine it put it in there I've put a couple thousand on it you know since we bought it just to make sure it was gonna do good and run fine for everyone you know for whoever wants it and it does I mean yeah. I don't necessarily want to sell it but it's gotta get that money flowing Got to get the money flowing. Also, another thing is I am here full time now, so yeah. it's no longer you know having no, no longer work where I used to building water jet and plasma tables. So I've been here for the last two weeks. So just trying to just knock everything we've had out here for a while. It was uh, it was getting to me. I'm not gonna lie. Going there working you know working full ten hour days there, then coming here and working trying to work a ten hour day here and getting like three, four hours of sleep for the last three, four months has just been kicking my butt. So it's just, you know, I knew something had to give. So I just left there here. It's a good thing because yeah. now that you're actually here, the gates are open, more people are going to come in, more people are, you're going to get more business and you'll be able to recuperate a lot of that money that you're losing from not working a, a another full-time job. But with this truck, I'm not really a fan of fender flares. Obviously, it's a dually, but I love the front end of this truck. Even if it is a two-wheel drive, you guys did have it four-wheel drive swap, or not swapped, but a four-wheel drive axle. I don't yeah, we were in the middle of converting it over to four-wheel drive. Had the transfer case, had the front axle. I went ahead and I put the front axle in it and all that stuff. Uh, I actually, I did have it sold to someone who uh, is a close family friend, and they were going to get it, but they wanted it four-wheel drive. But it turned into the guy owns a really really successful business but he had to buy like three new skid steers and oh, yeah. had to actually he ended up buying two more uh dodge just you know 3500 pickups and he still wanted the truck but he said it would be a little bit before he could purchase it so you know me and him talked and i just said hey i gotta send it down the road and without finishing up the conversion on i went ahead and i pulled the four-wheel drive front axle and everything back out of it and put the two-wheel drive which actually you helped me with that so yeah we uh did that 
So. But yeah, 55,000, come down here. Uh, I'll leave, obviously I'll leave their Instagrams down below for their powder coating. If you guys want to have any diesel work done, they do diesel work, powder coating. Um, the truck is fully tuned and deleted too. Yeah, so. fully tuned and deleted. Pretty dang clean on the inside. Um, the bed alone is worth about 25 grand. So um, 55 ain't, ain't too bad for, you know, with trucks being in the market nowadays, People are buying truck. People that bought trucks a few years ago are selling them more than what they're what they bought it for. Uh, especially to dealerships, they're oh, it's, giving them it's crazy, crazy right amounts now. of money yeah. for them. It's just that gum shooting. That well, the reason why you know you hop on like Auto Trade or anything like that, and you look at these trucks. Uh, I'm seeing these. I'm seeing that exact same model dad mm -hmm. gum with. 300,000 miles on it and not even, you know, and just a regular flatbed on it, not even a work style, you know, flatbed. And they're still selling those things, you know, 48, 49, 50, you know, so yeah. I'm just asking a little extra. And like I said, you know, it's our best offer, you know, hit me up with, you know, a decent, reasonable offer and, you know, we'll work something out. And I'm pretty easy to work with. So just. Yeah, exactly. So now that Chase is here full time, he's gotten this shop cleaned up quite a bit. The other shot is pretty clean too. I saw you guys, uh, or you moved all the dirt bikes in a line. Yep. Uh, it's not as clean as this shot because there's a lot more room in this one, obviously. But they got some aluminum boats being built, guys, dude. These are gonna come out sweet when they get done. This one is the, this was the first one that we started putting together, right? Yep. So obviously this one's a lot farther along than that one still needs the keels and the... Um, yep, the, key, the center keels the and the side center, keels, yeah. you know, put on it and it'll be ready to come off the jig and then these both are they both have the transom in it um this one we've already got the rails all the way around the top of it oh, yeah. gotta finish you know and then i've got to finish putting the rails across the top on this one i've got two sides you know clamped down on there but i've got to build the fronts and get them all tig welded on there but then they'll just get all the inner structure false floor foam seats you know real you know rod boxes front Hold deck up. The whole nine yards so yeah so the guy that they purchased this shop from made aluminum boats in here for 30 years and a few months ago he finally convinced him hey if you want to make a little more money start building some aluminum boats so chase went out purchased what like nine thousand dollars worth of aluminum or something like that yeah uh, and uh so. here they are now so um if you guys are looking for a it's not cheaply built, but they're gonna be selling them a lot cheaper than most places around here because they don't have to really pay employees. They don't have uh, too much overhead for these, but um, they're gonna turn out really good. We'll, we'll see where it goes, you know, it, and I mean, it might turn into a full-time thing. I still, like I said, my, my passion and my joy is definitely diesel trucks, but you know, may end up getting a couple employees, you know, to start building these things and you know, keeping up with the diesel work, may end up, you know, building another shop here for, the trucks i don't know haven't haven't decided yet haven't gone that far but yeah so we've actually um, already got all three of these sold so it seems i mean shoot, they sell themselves and they're not even done yet so i mean yeah. everybody anybody who's like you said the doors are open i've had a couple of people come by and you know we'll see one through the door open and they'll come up and a lot of people do remember that this was the boat place so they'll ask you know what's going on with it and, you know we'll just tell them hey you know we're trying our hand at building a couple of aluminum boats and like i said just just that way we've already got got them sold actually this one this one actually has already got a deposit on it so whenever we finish it up the guy's ready for it we'll do we'll show the wheels real quick of your powder coating okay. so like i said before their passions are you know diesel trucks and obviously powder coating and they just did um, a couple trophies for a local motorcycle shop and they had these wheels on display to show people their powder coating and these things came out beautiful what color is this one so that's just a uh, candy red and the other one is candy teal yeah that candy teal man oh yeah whoo kind of thinking i should have done it in that now no i was kidding i like that illusion purple that's that's a uh, not illusion purple that's that's the uh yeah that's illusion. that's illusion purple yeah oh, it looks a little bit different than mine. well it's just whenever something has way more angles and things on it it just you know it changes the way it looks especially you yeah. know also in fluorescent lighting too a mm -hmm. couple more frames yeah so chase is in here full time he's there's a lot of stuff around here but they're working on it um they're actually working on their buddy reed's 
2016 C7 Corvette. It uh, spun a couple rod bearings, so they took the whole motor out. It, it kills me to see this car, such a nice car on jack stands right now, but they are, the setup that they're gonna go with now is can be rated to about 1500 horsepower, so. Motors at the machine shop, he actually has to bring down all these parts to get balanced and stuff like that. Yep. Rods, pistons. Um, we ended up going with, uh, yeah, everything's Texas Speed. Awesome company to work with, super cool guys, know, know everything about it, you know. They're the guys to go with if you're gonna build like any, you know, LT style motor or any LS style motor. This, yeah. What bumper is this one off of? So this is, this is off of it. So, no, like it's not. He did the front clip conversion, so that, right? Yeah, the ZR. Uh, this is the ZR one style front bumper. Yeah, this but when this front bumper is on the car, it makes it look like it's like a Lamborghini or something. It oh, looks yeah. so sick. It's nice, but yeah, this one. It's gonna. This one's gonna be a wall ornament. Um, he has he has had some bad luck with this car here lately. Uh, the first day he owned it, he didn't. He was. He's in the Marines, and he was going to a new. A new base he hadn't he has never been to before so he took the car and there was a set of railroad tracks that caught the front splitter and just <laughs> shattered the whole carbon freaking fiber front front splitter and it actually whenever it shattered it it went in and it broke some of the bumper and everything so he's already got a whole new bumper and everything for it it's mm -hmm. actually it's at the paint and body shop being fixed right now it's the same one though right yeah same exact one you know zr1 style um, yeah, so, you know, if, if that wasn't bad enough, you know, me and him, we took it out one day. Uh, he'd only owned the car for five days, so that's the real crappy part. And we started, you know, doing some runs and everything on it, and we were running about a... We were in Mexico at the time, you know how <laughs> yeah. that goes, but yeah. we were uh, running it pretty hard, and it started making noises it shouldn't have made, and I just told him i was like hey man you know pull over for your window the block or anything like that and we'll uh we'll get it figured out so we ended up grabbing it towing it to the house and got to the house cranked it back up and it was making like three pounds of oil pressure and it was screeching pretty bad uh, he was hoping it was the exhaust rubbing something but i told him at three pounds of oil pressure it was more than likely not it just about spun every single uh every single main bearing and then it started to spin just about every single rod One, two, bearing. three. let's see you got three somewhat good ones and uh and then the rest are five spun. yeah and i mean and even then i think there you can actually start to see like it started washing that one out right there mm -hmm. it started to go that one is just about non-existent and you can tell it got hot because the daggum rod cap oh yeah you can see the, the color on it. on it this one this one too got color yep oh yeah these that are real bad and then this one you can see it just started to go on the inside right there but so we just went with all an all brand new rotating assembly new crank new rods new pistons like i said everything's takes the speed have you tested out that uh cam yet you can't. If you pick it up and drop it on the ground, if it breaks, it, it means it's still good. You want to try that? No, no. <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> that. That's one thing that actually still is good. Yeah, so, so basically they're moving along with this. Once they get that motor back from the machine shop, they'll get this thing put all back together. And this is a bad car, tell you what. Yeah, it was actually, it was making 850 at the wheel at the time that, you know, all this came apart. And I don't know the name of the shop. And even if I did, I wouldn't say it, but they didn't do a very good job. Supposedly the car had only been built for like a couple weeks and mm -hmm. this is going to happen. But the, the, the crazy thing, remember with all that rust when we were trying to get that, um, Oh yeah. The daggum. It's like they had the motor at the shop. They had the motor sitting out and it got rusty and they did, didn't even clean it up, but they just put, but yeah, they just put it on there. So yeah, they did do that. Uh, just about every single nut and bolt that held the engine in that crankshaft was rusty as hell. The, yeah. Every single bolt was loose. Uh, the dad gum, the motor wasn't even tightened up. The motor mounts weren't tight, nor was the whole torque tube for the transmission and everything. Every single bolt I took out by hand. It didn't have any of the bolts in the top part of the bell housing, so that was, technically to pull the engine out made my job a whole lot easier, but that wasn't good. And the same thing, this is another thing that was pretty, pretty crappy about it. It's got- Oh the, yeah, the flex, the uh, yeah, it's got, flywheel was- The flywheel wasn't even tight and it was rattling. Look at all the grooves on that thing. I was about to say, you can see all the dadgum 
right there and then you see they're all elongated this was rattling real bad so mm -hmm. at least we know when it goes back together it's going to be right and done right and you know won't have to worry about you know worry about anything and i mean like i said it's going to be cooler factory they're a 372 cubic inch we ended up going for a it's going to be a 416 now stroker and we're going uh five thousandths over on the bore just to uh just to straighten the bore out, get some of the, you know, it just, it only had light, light scratching in the cylinders. Like I said, the block itself was in really, really good shape. So luckily, you know, the base of what we need was in good shape. But other than that, we'll get this thing put together. We just got to get everything up to the machine shop now. It just came in, but actually it came in sat, uh, last Saturday. So we'll get everything up there, get it all balanced up and get it right and hopefully have it back together in the next couple of weeks, ready to go. All right, enough with the cars. You know, Corvettes are cool. Um, you guys obviously know that they're working on Caleb's uh, Mater truck with a 4BT, and they actually put a MV4500 in this thing, and that's pretty much the reason why I'm down here is to ask Chase. I've never done a MV4500 swap. Um, I wanted to ask him pretty much what all, what all, what all do I need from the donor truck, and then just give me like a brief explanation of you know, it's probably fairly simple to do it. Yeah, oh, it's um, super, super easy. Um, all you'll really need is just the transmission itself, the bell housing with it. You'll need the flywheel, or you'll, yeah, you'll need the flywheel. You'll need either use the clutch assembly that it has in it if it's in good shape. If not, you, you know, need to buy a new one. And uh, your truck, I you know you talked about converting it to full wheel drive. Are you still going to? make yeah. it a four-wheel drive yeah so i talked about this on last video the truck is coming off of is a four-wheel drive so i'm going to have the transfer case yeah, with it unless i wanted to get a new tail sh the tail shaft to the transmission yep. um so it's going to have the transfer case on there i talked to the dude he said he probably will sell me the axle because he's not going to need the axle okay. and then i said i might do you know a coil over setup instead of the coil yes. and the and the shock yeah, itself independent style yeah. on the tool drive so yeah so that's what i was going to say so what you'll need there is then uh just the transfer case with it because of obviously you know a tool drive and a full drive transmission are slightly different in the tail section um and just the rear drive shaft itself because it'll be for the length now your truck is he might he might use the, the he might shaft. actually use the drive shaft yeah um, so i'm gonna have to get one made get one made or just buy one for a Two wheel drive or a, no, no two wheel drive a four wheel drive long bed yeah and then that'll it'll bolt right in and you won't have to have any modification no nothing mm -hmm. and you can do that i've act, i mean it's actually pretty funny i've seen it a couple times uh just over the years working on vehicles and doing transmissions i've seen where someone you know had a two wheel drive vehicle and they got a better deal on you know apparently they got a really good deal on a transmission with a transfer case and drive shaft and i've seen two wheel drive vehicles have the whole four wheel drive assembly up underneath it because of you know they got the four wheel drive transmission you got to have the transfer case and the drive shaft uh i remember i worked on a tahoe one time and it was like that i rolled up underneath it and i was like <laughs> wait what <laughs> and i was like you know you got a four wheel drive you know <laughs> transmission transfer case and all that stuff he's like yeah man he's like uh he's like i couldn't find a two-wheel drive one at the time he's like other than remands he's like and they were like 1600 bucks he goes and a guy down the road sold me everything for like 400 oh, and i was yeah. like you know what no brainer might as well do it so yeah. i thought that was pretty funny um but other than that pedals hydraulic lines yep um pedals do i need lines. to get the computer or am i just gonna have a check engine light if i don't swap the computer over um it being an older second gen like that, you really wouldn't have to because if it doesn't, they don't really, second gens don't really have a limp mode so it won't limp it out because if it's not, you know, reading a transmission. It would just, it would just it's gonna give you a check engine light. But I mean, if anybody knows anything about a second gen, they always have a check engine light for just no reason. Yeah. I know every single second gen I own, I can hook my computer to it and there's no code, but check engine light, ABS light, all that stuff is all. Hey, that's when you go take the dash out and just remove that little bulb that remove goes to the check light engine bulb. light. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just that be pretty straightforward. Um, you know, your pedal assembly, it'll bolt right in there. Um, and I know I asked you earlier if there was going to be a cutout with a plate that I can knock out for the transmission. Sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. Also, you'll need to do a, the cutout for, you know, your, your transfer, transfer case. case. Yeah. 
things like that. Um, other than that, you know, you'll be pretty, you know, you'll be good to go. Uh, unhook the TV cable linkage for the uh, throttle valve for the automatic transmission because obviously you won't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I mean, it's everything will bolt right in like it's supposed to. I mean, I'm sure if I need any help, I'll yeah, if you need any help, you know, or we'll tow it down here. Tow we'll it down here, here, give you a hand with it. Go pretty, go pretty quick and easy. I'm actually, I'm fixing to do a swap, but I'm doing, you know my four-wheel drive auto and i've got a guy who's got a four-wheel drive manual he wants to turn it to a drag truck but you know you can't go that that fast with a manual so he wants an auto and he called the guy called me the other day wanting to buy a hey, transmission if you need a, uh 47 re <laughs> i got one <laughs> yeah but uh he um me and him got to talking and then you know i just told him i was like hey i was like if you'll come over one day we got the two two post lifts oh I'll you're just gonna swap swap the two swap everything over and he's gonna get you know he's he's pretty mechanically inclined so he's gonna come over we'll put his truck on a lift i'll put my truck on a lift we'll go up with him and we're just gonna take everything out swap everything over oh, yeah. just so he can get an automatic transmission he'll probably put a manual valve body in it oh he the is shifter. Uh, We'll swap everything over for the most part, uh, mainly in my truck, cause just to get it going and drive. And his truck won't be ready to drive yet because we're actually, whenever we get the auto out, we're actually gonna crate it up and send it off to Fire Pump and get it fully built. Oh yeah. And done up for him, so. Yeah. You know, doing doing things and you know, just being here full time now makes it so much easier. I'm actually able to get stuff done and you know, not work myself to death, so. I'm oh, pretty, yeah. pretty It's excited. nice having a lot of free time, isn't it? You don't gotta wake up. I mean, you still gotta wake up and come down here, but like with YouTube, and I've been doing this thing full time now for two years and it's nice. It's not having to wake up and, and rely on someone else that employs you and do what everything, do everything that they say. You know, I take vacations when I wanna take vacations. Obviously I'm not making money and it kinda hurts my channel a little bit, but um, I've been blessed enough to be able to be doing this for two years and you're gonna, you know, look back look back and be like why didn't i do this sooner so i mean honestly i mean after i will say you know there was that little bit of anxiety you know after the first week because it was just the thought of been like you know oh man you know i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna have a pay you know be getting a set paycheck at the end of the week you know like i normally do so there was a little bit of anxiety the first week and then after that though like i said you know people started coming in seeing the gates are open and just you know everybody's like oh man i want this done oh man i want that done you know so it's uh like you said it's been a blessing so far and so far business has actually been booming been doing really good for us so not not complaining and just staying hard at it i mean once you sell that truck sell those three boats you'll have a little bit of jangle in your pocket and uh you can start getting better equipment and start really putting your i guess your mind not your mind but start putting your all into this business that you've been doing for part time for Exactly. What, like that 10 one. years now or something like that? Even more than that? Uh, yeah. At least the powder coat. Yeah, the powder coat we've been doing for, yeah, the powder coat. And I started doing, shoot, yeah, I started powder coating around 2012. So, yeah, this coming up year will be, you know, right around 10 years. So, we'll be really? doing it. And like I said, actually, and uh, my girlfriend now, she's mainly the one that does all the powder coating. Dude, yeah. she did my stuff. If you guys didn't see it in the video, obviously, she was the one that did my stuff and that came out. Oh yeah, also, awesome! Like, all those wheels and everything she's done, like she does all that, and it's that's even freed up a lot of my time. So she's actually she's working here full time now too. As soon as uh, as soon as I quit my job, uh, she was waitressing and everything, and it was stressing her out with just having to drive to Panama, having to drive to Panama, and then you know clients and things like that and all yeah. that stuff. So I just told her I was like, hey, you know, you've been powder coating here on the weekends pretty much, you know, making extra money. I was like, I'm fixing to be here full time. I'm like, if you want to be here full time doing it, I was like, that is one one you know any you know some of the more you know complicated stuff i'll give her a hand on but mm -hmm. you know for the most part i'm like she just you know i'm like hey someone dropped off a set of wheels she'll throw them over there in the blasters sand blast them up clean them up hang them up out gas them and powder coat them and like i said you know she's uh she's picked it up really quick and doing an awesome job so it's uh, it's free up my time to work on everything get everything done so now that he's given me kind of a general idea i already kind of knew the general idea of doing an MV4500 swap, but hearing him talk about it makes him a little more confident. Um, sounds a lot easier than you may think, I guess. Yeah. But, but, I mean, shoot, the, the, the hardest thing to that swap is gonna be is just picking that daggum MV4500 up. They're not the heaviest. With the transfer case. 
Well, you can put the transfer case on later. Oh, I guess, yeah. It, it'd make, it'll make it a whole lot easier to take the Well, the, the case MV4500 off. isn't... MV5600, that thing is a big mother. Oh, yeah. So once, is it still sitting right here? Just sit, uh, I slid it, cleaned up, I slid it up underneath there. So you can take a look at it and see the, see the size of right up underneath the uh, store. Oh, okay, yeah. So they did... Uh, they swapped out someone's transmitter, or they put a new rebuilt transmission. Yeah, put a reman in the gas but truck. And this thing, right fifty six hundred, is way bigger than you look up on. You look up under the truck uh, mater, and you look at that MV forty five hundred, and you come over here and look at that fifty six hundred. Huge. Yeah, that's a man of a transmission. Those those weigh right right around four hundred pounds. <laughs> so that one is. Try picking that thing up by yourself. Yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> that is why you get a good transmission jack for one of those. But oh, once yeah. you get a good transmission jack, and like I said, you know, if it's easier for you if we want to tow it down here and do it. Like I said, we've got the lifts to do it on, or even if we just want to pull up on the concrete, just being on concrete and being able to roll the jack around, it makes it so much nicer and easier. Oh, yeah. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully, you did enjoy. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you think I should um, do the swap in my house or just bring it over here. I think it would be a lot easier to bring it over here. And, I mean, they got two post lifts to lift the truck up. And you guys have big uh, transmission jacks or just the ones that roll on the ground? I've got the one that rolls on the ground. I actually, I do have one of the tall ones uh, for, like, doing it on a lift. So, either way, you know, however you want to do it. Yeah, is the easiest. So, but yeah, like I said, it's gonna be it for the video, guys. Hopefully, you did enjoy. Go check or come check out Chase over here at. Uh, you guys go by Iron Eight Coatings, or you guys going by Panhandle Precision Perform or Performance Precision yeah, and Powder Coating. <laughs> the 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 mouthful. Oh, you know, just for uh, you know, an FYI, I didn't come up with that name. That was actually my <laughs> flight instructor, and they had already submitted it and all that stuff. It was kind of like it was a gift right after we bought the place. I mean, he. He paid for all of it and everything, and so I didn't, I didn't want to tell him that I thought that was a bit of a, uh, a mouthful and all that stuff. So we, you know, we took the name. Come down to the uh, the quadruple P's over here in Bonifay, Florida. <laughs> we're actually we're looking at changing the name, um, just change it up, making it something shorter, something what we originally wanted to, you know, what we wanted to make it as. Uh, but we're in the middle of having a logo all designed and you know registered trademark and all that stuff so i won't say the name just oh, yeah. yet but we'll uh it, it'll be it'll be changed shortly so all right well there it is guys thank you for watching we'll see you guys in the next one dipping diesel out